How you doing? It's your boy, Uncle Mike. Just been out for a quick dive, and um, I've been reasonably successful. <sighs> um, I've, I'm speechless, to be honest. 25, 30 kilos of kingfish. I'm gonna go get it weighed now, and we'll see. But shout out to the ocean and to aim right. One meter gun, 14 mil rubber. Don't shoot brim. Shoot kingfish, apparently. You can, you can stop it. You look cute, though. Guess I'll uh, spin a yarn about that big old kingfish, eh? Hey? Yeah, this started off like most of my dives. Cold, no fish, uh, you know. But I go, I, I uh, got better. So something not that chill happened at the start of this dive. You know, I went down into a crack to grab a lobster. Um, pulled him out. But what it did is it knocked the GoPro up. Because I mustn't have had the, the little GoPro thingy tightened up enough so the rest of the dive is like uh half footage um but here's what it would have looked like when i shot my kingfish so here we go with some footage very obviously my footage uh i shot this with my gopro and i definitely didn't borrow it from daniel man thanks dan you're a legend mate but here's what happened you know two kings came in one stopped to have a look i went bang like that and then the rest is history cut to about 15 minutes of me cheering and carrying on i'll uh i'll skip that for you <laughs> sorry couldn't help myself i'm still buzzing <laughs> so here's some fantastic footage of a lobster that i got the very same lobster where I bent back my GoPro. Thanks, Lobby. You were delicious. So this is a pretty much synonymous diver this day. It's cold. There's not much fish around. But, you know, wait it out on the bottom. See what pops up. There's a few moeys around. And I think... I think it's about time I had a nice moong dinner. Right, so the red moong is a moong, a species of fish that are found off southeastern Australia, uh, North Island, New Zealand. They're one of, if not the most basic fish that you can shoot. Now, everyone who starts new fishing starts shooting Ludric, starts shooting red moong, and then you move on to brim. Well, brim are probably in the. Yeah, but you get what I'm saying. They're delicious, they're easy to spear, and they get, you know, they get up to about 60 centimeters in size. It's a fair feed. It looks like a decent meal. Um, one thing I will say is that they are very slow growing. So if you're going to take a feed of red mong, um, be selective, be sustainable. Don't just blast 10 giant mong. You know, you get rid of the big fish. There's not gonna be big fish anymore. There's only gonna be little fish who will then breed to create even, you know, little, it's like how they make little horse just don't shoot all the big fish, alright? Viewers here may recognize my younger brother Lawson. Here he is, attempting to shoot his first fish with, you know, gentle encouragement from his loving older brother and absolutely not pissing himself laughter. He tried. You'll get there, mate. It takes a while. Now, I know that everyone's been like, Whoa, Uncle Mark, where have you been? It's been so long. Um, you know, I've been hanging out. Here's a few of my adventures that I've been on. It hasn't been the most exciting couple of months. Ah, uh, a lot of work. Uh, unfortunately, it's hard to 
play videographer sometimes when you have to work. But that's just life, I suppose. The following is a public service announcement of why you don't get people in the general public to film when you get out of the water with a prize fish because they don't know how to use a GoPro. Not, not saying that I do. But, yeah, just have a look. <sighs> I had a cool video finisher to do with that. Nice announcement. A shout out to the maker of the gun, also. Shout out to Aimright. Fantastic gun. But I digress. On to the cooking lesson. Okay, so first of all, grab some loose leaves of cabbage. Now, roll these up and finely shave them with your knife. What you want here is just enough to cover the base of the sandwich. It'll be sort of like a support to stop it from getting too soggy. Now, I cut these kingfish steaks nice and thick. As you can see, it's about a centimeter and a half. You want to get as much surface area for crumbs, just so that it's, you know, obviously as crunchy as possible. I think that this is roughly kingfish loin from somewhere around the top shoulder. But look at that. Like the marbling and the fat through the meat, absolutely delicious. So here, uh, I'm practicing a dry brine method, I suppose. So you want about a teaspoon and a half of salt and two teaspoons of sugar. Um, now, all this is gonna do is it's gonna suck out moisture, but also trap in moisture, if that makes sense. It's basically the same as what you do when you smoke fish. Now, my process here is I always double crumb. So you go into your crumb, make a whole lot of mess everywhere, back into the egg, and then back into the crumb. It's a more solid base, it's thicker, and it's just better for sandwiches like this. So get your oil nice and hot, about 180 degrees, and then whack in your big nugs. Them a nice swirl around don't touch hot oil i don't have to tell people that just don't do it if you don't know what you're doing get an adult or 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 someone who knows what they're doing i sure don't now nice golden brown uh, maybe a minute or two these don't need to cook a whole lot so then from there we've whacked down a bit Japanese barbecue sauce, or you can even just use regular barbecue sauce. Now, this is the bit that always gets me. So you wanna try and get away from the crusts as far as possible, because traditionally in a katsu sando, you cut the crusts off. A um, Bit of kewpie, just because it's the absolute best. And then from there, wacky crusts off. Anytime now. Come on, mate. Get your crusts off. People know how to make. There you go. Look at that. Nice English sandwich. Cut her open. Let's have a look at that fish, eh, mate? <laughs> the boy can make a sandwich. Okay, so there you have it. Uncle Mott's Kingfish Katsu Sandos. Absolutely amazing. When you do that dry brine on the fish, it really just locks in the moisture. So. The next recipe, uh, it's not my own. I borrowed it from Kimmy Werner. 
Now, Kimmy is absolutely amazing. And if you haven't seen any of her videos, I promise that they blow everything you've seen out of the water. She is an absolutely fantastic human being. So go watch those videos and then come back and see me butcher one of her recipes. Perfect. Ah. So here we've got another loin of kingfish. So what you want to do is slice this up nice into about one centimeter square cubes. Um, personally, this is my favorite size. You can go bigger, you can go smaller, it's up to you. Now, cucumber in a poke isn't common, but Kimmy does it and it works. So chop them to about the same size. You can use green onions, you can use red onions, you can use whatever you want. Pink shallots if you have to. Just put some onion in there. We only had this dirty old red onion. Because I'm disorganized in almost everything I do. <laughs> so, good shoyu. You want Japanese soy sauce and about three tablespoons. Slog it all in there. Next up, nice bit of sesame oil. Don't be afraid of the sesame oil. Get it in there, cover everything, maybe like two tablespoons. Yet again, Kewpie mayo. You don't have to go over the top, that's enough. This is Tobiko. Uh, it's flying fish row, it's vibrant and you know, it's a flavor sensation and also textures. If you don't like popping textures, you won't like this, but I do and it's delicious. Next up, the secret, Uncle Mott's chili sauce. Don't go too over the top with this. It'll be overbearing and quite spicy. So, grab all that, give it a quick flick. Make sure that everything is dispersed. From there, you just want to mix it all together, get everything, you know, ta-da. So there you have it. Oh. Kimmy Werner's Poke, Uncle Mott's, Kingfish Katsu Sandos. And I have to tell you folks, I think I nailed it this time. Cutting this really thick and doing that brine method just makes it so much sweeter and moister. It's fantastic. This fish, I'm so proud of. This fish has gone on to feed 30 people. Like, that's pretty amazing, in my opinion. Mm. Oh, he's having a good time. That's good stuff. Right. One of you, mate, I cooked it. Give this a go. Now, it's got flowers from my garden in it. You know, a bit of a green thumb. Mmm. That's probably the best way I've ever cooked fish. And I haven't even cooked it. So, you know what? This was, this was a bloody good meal. I'm your boy, Uncle Mike. Be kind to each other. I can make a good sandwich. Hey, look, what are you doing? I'm eating kidneys. You're eating kidneys? <laughs> what do you say? Say thanks, Hannah. Thanks, thanks. Mark. Thanks, Hannah. Thanks, Mark. Good boy. So when I got back to shore, I realized that this king had been tagged. So I jumped online entered my information and sent it off to the DPI. When they got back to me with a free shirt, uh, they came back with a great story. So this king had actually first been tagged down in Port Adelaide, roughly 354 days before I caught it. Now, before I caught it, it weighed about 17 kilos. So it's put on like a good amount of weight in what, one year? That's amazing. These kingfish, at such a big size, are surprisingly sustainable. Now, citizen science, I think, is just so important. It's something that just really, really can help. Because, you know, 
there's so many more fishermen than there are marine biologists and marine scientists. So what I'm going to do from now on is I'm going to start a little bit of science with Mott. Mott Aquatic Science, if you want. Now, I think that, uh, you know, I don't know, I might figure out getting otoliths out, uh, just talking about ecospheres and things like that. I've got a couple of friends who are like biologists, um, chemists, archaeologists, things like that, who are just so knowledgeable that I want to try and get onto the show. Um, I'm going to push away a little bit from just focusing on food and go a little bit, just a bit further out into, you know, a bit of everything. Uncle Mott's Kitchen will still exist, but we're going to go more scientific. So I hope you'll stick around. As always, I'll have links to all my socials and my Patreon down in the description. So hit like, hit subscribe, hit the bell icon if you like this video, and please share it with all your friends so that we can get a little bit more aquatic science out there. Be kind to each other.